stole the studio from Johnny for a little bit so that way I could sit down and have a nice conversation with a radio professional, also a healthcare professional, Woodlawn CEO John Alley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Glad to have you here. It's uh, that time of the month again to kind yeah. of come in and uh, what's happened in the past month. Had our board meeting yesterday and, you know, so I've kind of got a few items to go over. Of course, what's the primary thing <laughs> on everybody's mind right now? COVID-19. Uh, it is still a, a very major factor locally. Uh, one of the interesting, I track new cases. Uh, past nine days, how many new cases in Fulton County in nine days? Ooh, boy. 81. Oh, wow. Okay. I That's was not a big number. Like, yeah, I was going to guess like 50. Yeah, we have 81 new cases uh, just in the past nine days. So we're actually seeing more new cases now than we did back in the March, April, May. I think what's contributing to that is the state site that we've, uh, they're on uh, State Road 25 next to Tweedledee's. Uh, you know, we've run through there. The state's had, I think, almost 6,000 people go through there for testing. So the more you test, the more positives you're going to have. But I think it validates one of the things that we've been saying all along. Most of those folks that are going through there say, eh, I don't feel bad, I just want to get tested. And they're coming back positive. So, you know, it reinforces that you can have COVID-19 with zero symptoms. What's that mean? That means you're spreading it to everybody else. So I'll get back to everybody's favorite subject that uh, nobody wants to hear, but the masks are important. They do not prevent you from getting it, they prevent you from giving it to somebody else. So, you know, think of your neighbor, think of your family, wear a mask when you're out running around. Uh, you know, you can see, I visit a lot of the stores here in town, very few people are wearing masks and, you know, they get, well, if I catch it, I catch it. It's not the point. You might be that one person that feels absolutely perfectly, but you've still got that virus and you can still spread it. So, highly recommend wear your mask, kind of keep your social distancing. This isn't over. Uh, we're actually seeing more positive cases now than we did early on into this. And I think it's because more testing sites are out there. Again, a lot of folks have the virus with no symptoms. So just you know, protect, not yourself, protect everybody around you. So wear your mask, and uh, I know that's not what everybody wants to hear, but unfortunately we're kind of validating it now when we're seeing the number of new cases with zero symptoms. So please do that. Um, you know, like I say, we're seeing a, a lot of folks come through that state testing site, which is a good thing. Uh, getting more folks tested, letting them know what's going on. One of the things we are seeing, we haven't seen it here yet, is the amount of hospitalizations. Now, the, the, the virus seems to be highly more contagious now than it was early on, not quite as deadly. So we're seeing folks get sick, but not the severity we had before. So a lot of the places that we try to send our patients to if we can't treat them here aren't accepting. Uh, one, they say we have no beds. Well, when you look into it, they've got the beds, but they got no staff. Right. We were seeing a, a tremendous amount of, uh, I call it brain drain in healthcare, is that the nurses are saying, I've had enough. You know, I've got kids at home, they're not in school, and they're just getting out of healthcare. So, you know, we're experiencing that too. We've got, uh, as of yesterday, we had 20 openings for registered nurses. That's a big number for us. Yeah. Now, are we, are we still managing? Yes. We got let several of our director level folks are in, so they've gone back to do some bedside and trying to do their other job. But it's just not us; it's it's statewide. My daughter's a nurse in Southern Indiana. Same thing down there. They're just a lot of the nurses. If they're close to retirement, they're saying, "I'm gone. I'm out of here. Uh, I just don't want to put up with this anymore." So this is very stressful. Not you know for those folks who have the illness, it's stressful. But those who haven't had it very stressful on them because when am I going to get it is kind of what's in their mind right now as we see these spikes. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's unfortunate we're seeing this right now. I think we're going to see this for a while. Um, you know, you, the rumor is, oh, after the election, COVID will go away. No, I don't think so. I, <laughs> last I checked, it's not a, uh, a Democrat or Republican disease. It's, it's a normal disease. But it is here. We've got to address it. We've got to do something with it. Vaccines are coming, but again, it's probably going to be second quarter next year. So I think we're in for this unfortunate situation, you know, through third quarter next year. Uh, by the time we get the vaccine out, a lot of folks say, I don't want to be the first one, you know, let somebody else get it first. So I think by the time we get through all that, uh, it, we're looking for another, you know, third quarter next year before this is over. So hang in there. It's stressful, but, you know, protect others. That's all I, the best thing I can say, just 
protect those around you because you might be that one has the, the virus but feels fine. So just think of that, try to protect those around you. Uh, you know, again, we're looking at our visitor restrictions. Right now we still have it where you can have one visitor per day. I think if we start really seeing a, some more spikes in that, we're going to have to look at that again at some point. Do we shut down the visitors coming into the building? Uh, you know, we've had a few staff members test positive. So again, we're, we're concerned. Where's that coming from? Are they coming in, you know, through the visitors? So look at that every day. Uh, you know, if we get to that point where we say, okay, we've got to restrict the visitation, absolutely we'll let folks know, you know, through you, through the newspaper, however we best can do it to sign up front. We don't want to do that because that's you know that's not good for the patient because that's, when you don't feel good you'd like to see some of the, your loved ones yeah. but we got to protect our staff and other patients so that might happen not yet but we are looking at it on a day-to-day -day basis. A couple of other things that happens this month uh, you know month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month so we're almost done with that but if you haven't ladies if you haven't had your mammogram get it done. It was interesting, uh, we had a phone call yesterday from a, a, one of our previous patients who had their mammogram, and so we sent out reminder notices. So we sent a notice out. She said, you know, I ignored the first one. I didn't want to do it because of COVID. Well, we sent a second reminder because if we don't, you know, that's part of what we do. Yeah. You know, really, we're serious. You need to have this done. And her comment was, you know, I just had one last year or so. I was fine, but okay, I came in. Well, unfortunately, you know, she had an issue. Her comment to us was, had I not paid attention to your second notice, you probably saved my life. So ladies, it's important, get your mammogram. So if you haven't had one yet, uh, most screening mammograms start at the age of 40 and are paid by your insurance as a part of your preventative health care. So if you haven't had your mammogram, give us a call, 224-1151 and get it scheduled. You do not need a physician order for a screening. We can do that without a physician order. It could be that one 10 minutes of your life that changes it forever, if we can find something early. So please get your mammograms. The other thing that we talk about at the board, uh, we've been working very hard on becoming what's called a stroke ready facility. Yes. I think we've got all of our ducks in order. We're ready for our survey to come in. Um, you know, we've seen a tremendous increase now once we've put this program in place, early identification of strokes. So, you know, we were, we thought we were seeing, oh, one a month. Well, we missed a lot, I think, because of, of these protocols. So by working with the local EMS and our hospital and then the stroke uh, neurosurgeons in Fort Wayne, we got this program in place that we have very early identification. And one of the things I think you have to remember is, you know, don't be afraid to call 911. You know, it's, it's, if you think that's going to happen, call. Don't worry about it. I'd much rather you call 911, come in and say, nope, not having one, than sit there and go, you know, am I? I, I don't know. Right. Because, you know, time is brain, unfortunately, with, and for, you know, you can lose millions of cells in your brain with the lack of blood flow to it, and that causes down the road issues so please if you're thinking you're having a stroke you know if a family member you think they're having a stroke call 911 so one of the things that we try to you know an acronym is be fast because again time is brain the B stands for balance watch for any sudden loss of balance eyes check for eye loss F face look for uneven smile so if you kind of you know you smile and one side kind of droops a little bit that's one of the warning signs arm check if one arm is weak so put both arms out and if one starts kind of falling down on its own another sign speech look for slurred speech and then time call 911 right away we have now got it with the local EMS that the moment they arrive on scene if they suspect a stroke we've got a private number secure that they can call in and give us all your information so it's not going over the radio so when you get to the hospital, you're already in the system, you're registered, we take you straight to CT and do that scan. At that point, we also have a telemedicine set up with the neurosurgeons in Fort Wayne. So you will be talking face to face with a neurosurgeon at our facility. Again, time is brain. So if you suspect you or a loved one's having a stroke, call 911, best thing you can do.
oh, we finally get out open nursing positions. We're still mm -hmm. seeing that, and again, we're not alone in that. Uh, it's kind of statewide, so you know we've got a, a fairly nice program, I think, for nurses coming into our program. Um, $5,000 sign-on bonus. You know, we try to keep our nurse to patient ratio at four or five. A lot of facilities are at eight and nine, so we try to make sure we keep that low, uh, <coughs> low ratio. We do have a student loan forgiveness for nurses, which is, I think, we're the only hospital that I'm aware of in the state that is doing that right now. We do tuition reimbursement, so if you want to, you come in as a, an ASN, you want to get a BSN, we'll help pay for that. Compared to pay, healthy work environment, and we do try to keep our nurses educated. So we have a very robust educa internal education program. So, you know, uh, if you're thinking about making a change, give us a call and talk to us. See what we can help you with. Now, uh, I know a lot of times there's some restriction around the student loan forgiveness. Um, do you guys have anything like you yeah, have to be and I, it's, I think it's so a long? Boy, I think if, uh, let me, th you make, boy, make an old guy think here. On the, I think we can go up to $25,000, and that's a five-year commitment on your part, or $15,000 student loan with a three-year commitment. So that's fairly nice. If you can come yeah. in and say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to work for five years, you know, we'll take care of twenty-five thousand worth of your student loans. So it's kind of something unusual in healthcare. But you know, uh, these times right now, you just got to think outside that box and find new ways to try to get quality staff in. As far as a capital request, we did have one request. Uh, Nancy Harrell's the director of our dietary, uh, came in and our dishwashing machine. Uh, it's not like you have at your house, but it's seventeen years old, and it's just we're starting to see just daily minor repair issues with that. So it was made the decision as far money better spent to put a new one in than keep repairing that. So we did get uh, the board did approve for a new dish machine at uh, fifty one thousand dollars. That's a nice dishwasher. Yeah. But uh, you know you can imagine you know, the the standards we have to have at the hospital has to be high temp and all that. So uh, you know we're looking forward now getting that in. I think the staff's gonna like it because now it's gonna be a little more consistent. Uh, some new bells and whistles on a machine now from seventeen years ago. That's going to make some of the, the dietary folks' life just a little bit easier. We finally then got into the financials. With, they're a little better. They're, we still haven't totally recovered, I think, from the whole COVID situation. We had a right at $13.9 million in gross revenue. Uh, we wrote off about $9.2 million. Had other operating revenue of about $36,000. Operating expenses of $4.8 million. So when you do the math on that, we actually had an operating loss small one of $77,000 for the month. But we had some non-operating revenue, which is some of the endeavors that we have uh, partners with other uh, facilities that we'd like to pull that out. It's not operations for us. That came in at 343,000. So we did wind up with a net income for the month of 265,000. Our goal is to consistently try to make the operating income a positive number. So we were a little short this month, but again, we're still seeing the effects of COVID uh, we are still having you know, some procedures canceled. Folks are saying, you know, there's too many new cases right now. I'm staying home. I'm going to delay it. I'll call you next month or in a couple months to we'll see if we're better. So, again, we're still seeing a little bit of that from folks, and I'm okay with that. You know, if they're concerned about their safety, by all means, we can delay this. We can get you in when you feel better because, you know, this is uh, taking a psychological toll on all of us. Uh, everybody's just tired, I think. You know, yeah. The whole COVID thing is wearing, wearing us down. Um, so hopefully we can help you feel a little better. Don't worry about it. We'll get you in when you're ready. Call us. We'll get you in for whatever procedure. Now, you know, if it's an emergent procedure, yes, they still need to get them. But some of the electives, we're starting to see just a few folks saying, can I wait a little longer? Right. And, uh, you know, that's their choice. We're good with that. We'll get them in as soon as we can. Once we, they kind of get feeling better, maybe we see this spike dropping off again. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, next two to three weeks, we'll start seeing maybe the new cases again falling off a little bit. Can't promise that, but that's, that's always a hope that we can have. Now, I know uh, a little bit earlier you said you guys aren't seeing the overwhelmingness of the COVID at the hospital. So open beds are still pretty high? Yeah, I mean, we, we've got just some general you know, illness some folks in today. Uh, like I said, we have got two COVID patients in. Neither one of them is on a vent. I mean, they're sick, sick enough they need to be hospitalized, but they're not so sick that we're having to put them on ventilators. Now, some of, uh, you know, like I said, i got a daughter that works in a COVID unit in southern Indiana. Now, they're just the opposite. They're seeing the majority of their patients are coming in requiring ventil ventilators. So, 
whatever strain is down there, it's different than what we're seeing here. And I told her, well, just keep it down there. We don't want it up here. Yeah. But they are seeing, you know, some sicker patients there. Some other states are experiencing that too, where they're having just uh, regional hot spots where folks are coming in and need to be on the vents. And then maybe two counties away, they're seeing positive cases, but they're sending them home on, you know, just some home meds. So it's, it's kind of hit and miss right now. It's hard to say what's going on. So it, it you know, again, being a virus, you don't know how it's going to mutate as it moves through the population. Uh, I know early on uh, there was a special strain of COVID in Chicago. There was the only spots you could see it when they looked at you know, kind of the DNA of that virus. It was unique to that area. So are we seeing more regional you know, viruses now where it's not quite the same as what's two counties away or a state away? It's, it's unusual. It's kind of, you know, hate to say, it's kind of fascinating to read about this. And, you know, yeah. My life is so boring. I guess I spend a lot of time at night, you know, becoming a Google expert on this. But it is kind of fascinating to follow the progression of this disease from where it was, you know, early this year to where it's at now. They have seen some major changes in the DNA of that virus as it mutates to better, you know, serve itself. Uh, you know, it, it realizes if I'm really aggressive, I kill my host. That's not good. So I think it's becoming kinder and gentler, for lack of a better term. <laughs> But it's more contagious now than what we saw early on. So, you know, it's constantly changing. Um, hopefully, when they finally do get, you know, the vaccine, it's going to be enough of a broad-based vaccine that it will cover all these different mutations that's come out of this virus. Uh, last we heard, it's still going to be a two-shot process. You'll get a shot 28 days later, a second one. Uh, we were contacted uh, probably about two, three weeks ago from the State Department of Health as they're preparing to get these vaccines out. So it, it is coming. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but they at least give us, here's how this, you know, uh, vaccine has to be handled. And one of the things on it is hard for us, it has to be at an ultra low temperature. And once you fall the vaccine, it has to be used within six hours. So we're scrambling to find, you know, how can we keep this frozen? Right. Uh, I think it was 80, 81 degrees, minus 81 degrees Celsius. That's pretty cold. Yeah. So not many freezers, you know, go down that low. So again, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, I think we'll probably not be a distribution site. I think South Bend's going to be Fort Wayne, so we'll get ours from there. So that changes our little bit. We might not have to keep it at minus 81, but we still have to keep it frozen. So it's kind of interesting. We're trying to get that in place. How are we going to handle that? And then what's the protocol? Who gets it? The state hasn't come out yet and said, you know, here's the hierarchy. I think that will be coming. My, my best guess is they're going to say healthcare workers have to be the first, then they're going to look at the, the elderly and start moving through the population. So there will be guidelines on who can get that vaccine. Uh, but it's, uh, it's coming. It's not here yet. So we're getting ready. Each day we contact the state. They give us a little more information on how we can uh, proceed as we look for the vaccine coming sometime. Still thinking first of the year before we'll really see it in this area. Yeah, I know uh, the other day on the news, uh, WSBT had a rough draft, which was health care, um, high of concern, mm -hmm. followed by those who are unable to stay at home, and then the rest of the population. Yeah, so it's... But, you know, that's still rough draft. The state can still go, well, we decided we don't want to do it in that exact order. Yeah, what we don't know right now is, is it going to be mandated for all healthcare workers that you have to take the vaccine? Right. Uh, you know, a lot of you know folks are still concerned about it. It's a fairly new vaccine. You know, do I want to be the first one? I don't know. You know, right now, uh, you know, we do mandate all of our employees must get a, a flu shot. You know, because you know that's been around long enough, and we do see the benefits from getting that flu shot. So, is the you know, CDC or the State Department of Health going to say, okay? you must get a COVID vaccine. Haven't seen that yet. I don't think that's a high priority. So I'm, I'm hoping they're going to allow the employees to make that a personal choice at this point. Now, I think if we get two and three years into the vaccine, then yeah, we can probably make it mandatory because it's probably going to be a little more, you're going to have a more uh, comfort level with it, I think, in three years than in three months. So Right. All right. Interesting things. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how things continue to change going forward. Uh, I know there's a lot of unknown questions, and we may never fully know the answer. I don't think to we this. ever will fully know it. And uh, you know, everybody said I want it to go back like it was. I'm not sure we're ever going to be back like it was. Yeah, unfortunately, I think there's a whole new normal now. Yes, I do. I think that's, we're kind of getting there. 
All right, well, Mr. Ellie, thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to talking to you again next month. All right, thank you.